All right, welcome to the last episode of Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Pretty sure this is the last episode and I need to be prepared for stuff like this for future things that I plan on doing, so... Here we go. I'm decent, come in. And by come in, I mean take away the freaking game window. So, um, I thought I'd see what you were up to. Still roughly around six foot one or so. Don't think I'll hit any more growth spurts. Why do you always come back at me with the lamest jokes? Do you enjoy teasing me so much? If that doesn't scream not in the mood for dad jokes, I don't know what does. Sorry, you are kind of fun to tease. Which is a good thing. Guys tend to tea, girls, they enjoy being around. You, you enjoy being around me? Well, sure, why wouldn't I? Because I'm always saying mean things to you and acting like I don't like you. I never thought you really meant most of it. You seem to have a hard time expressing yourself. Plus, you just sold yourself out. Acting like I don't mind you implies you, in fact, do like me. Hmm, maybe I misspoke. I'm having a hard time reading Yunji. Well, even harder than I normally do. She seems to be struggling to not fall back on her usual Sundari routine. Is something the matter? You could talk with me if you want. I'll listen. I guess it's never been easy for me to say what I'm thinking. I've always been in my sister's shadow. At the same time, I feel embarrassed for thinking that way, but still. It's her ease in picking up English. The way guys look at her. I guess I just feel inferior to her no matter what I do. The only thing I can claim to be better than her at would be shooting. Not sure why you feel inferior. You're your own person, cute in your own way. I am not cute! Stop that! You are cute. Why would you ever take a comp why won't you ever take a compliment from me? How am I ever supposed to tell you how much I like you when you won't even let me tell you you're cute? Wait, what am I meaning right now? Did I just tell Yuji I liked her? Well I like you too! I mean wait, no. I won't stop myself this time. I I love you, Sean. She's sincere. This is coming right from her heart. She deserves a truthful answer in return. I love you too, Yunji. I'll leave you to go hit on jump. Did you just tell me you loved me too? Yes, I did. You're not teasing me, right? Please tell me you aren't. My heart can't take that kind of teasing. I don't tease about important things like this. You're fun to be around. And I've fallen head over heels for you. Oof! Thud. Yunji pulled her uniform off in a flash. As if to make sure it's it's real, she tackled and hugged me to the bed and is showering me with kisses. I'm trying my best to return them, but she's peppering me with them like a machine gun. Hey, I did um, I um, get a chance to breathe? Oh, God! Whoa! Yunji rolls around, leaving... Um... Huh. How should I go about this? Well... Future Sean, you've got a lot of work to do, but, um, more importantly... Okay, maybe Future Sean will dub over with this from Four Kids Eyes dialogue, but, um... He'll just read it nonchalantly as we go, because this is very awkward. Okay, so here we go. Yunji rolls around, leaving me above her as I regain my breath. Remember a couple of nights ago when you helped me with English? Sure, I remember, but... What does this have to do with here and now? I want to learn one more word. What are the word? Oh. What sort of tour guide would it be if I didn't give you the best Korea has to offer? Did you just say something flirty? You might want to get used to it. I'm claiming you as mine, you know. No sharing with the people then? Of course not. I'm more equal than the rest of the populace, and I don't share. I've heard about taking Sailor's Shore leave to get a little action, but this is entirely different. I'm in love with the girl and she's in love with me. And I can't leave her behind after Shore leave is over. The question is, how do I go about making this happen more in the future? I'm due to leave here I'm due to leave here in another day, and Dachi could just waltz out with me. Yunji has actually fallen asleep on top of me, like a cat. I'm not complaining, but 
It might make going to the bathroom a tad difficult. Maybe I should... Wait! So we're just skipping it? Oh. Maybe I should rest up as well in case round two is on the way. I think I heard someone moving. Must be John going to the bathroom. Guess I'll get some shut-eye then. Well, this turned out to be a lot easier than I thought. Wait, John came in here? Um, hi, John. Fancy running into you here. Well, it is my own bedroom, you know. And here you went and defiled my little sister on my bed. Pretty nervy of you. I love it! Yeah, sorry about that. Things kind of got carried away. I wasn't thinking with my head. Oh, I do believe you were thinking with your head. But just not the one that contains your brain. But it's okay. This was what I'd hoped for. You did seem to be playing matchmaker at times, didn't you? I must admit, you are pretty cute. I might have to lock Yunji in a closet so I can have my way with you myself. I don't think Yunji would allow that. Relax, I was merely teasing. However, I'm afraid I do have something for you that... here that I'm not teasing you about. In the moonlight, I think I see something shining. Is that... a needle? There's a certain appearance that our leader needs you to feign. For the sake of our mission, this way seems easiest. You don't have to do this, whatever you're doing. Let's talk it out. I'm afraid I do, but don't worry. This won't kill you, probably. With that, she gently injects me with the needle. This will just make you go to sleep for a while, but not permanently. But why? What did I do? Damn, it's full of stars. Sleepy stars. You only put in the recommended dose, right? Yes, of course I did. Maybe. Help me dress him and let's take him to the rendezvous point. Can I borrow him for one night sometime, please? I'll pretend I didn't hear that. Let's move. So groggy. Feels like I've been on a three-day rager while on the shore leave, and I'm just barely sobering up. My eyelids are so heavy. I need to take stock of my surroundings, though. Oh god, oh man, that light barely on me, and it feels like an inferno of a thousand suns. Whatever they struck me with is about to give me the world's worst hangover. After a few moments more, they start to come over into view. Not that there's much to see. I'm in the plainest, emptiest room I've ever been in. The only things I can make out are a single door and an occupied chair at the very far end of the room. And from the silhouette of the figure occupying the chair, I know it's not one of the girls. Too masculine looking for Jung or Unji. I wonder where those two are. I'd like an explanation as to why they felt the need to drug me and drag me to God knows where. I see you have rejoined the conscious world. Undoubtedly, you have questions. I'll try my best to guide you, though time is short. That voice. I recognize it. I've only heard it a few times since being in Korea, but it's one of the three I recognize. It's the driver? I know you. Our driver. Where am I? I'm glad the drug didn't dull your senses too much. Yes, I've been driving you around Korea this week. My name is Namgun Kwangjo, uh, and I'm the father of both Jung and Yunji. Thank you for accompanying them these past few days, for you have given me hope. Hope? You mean I'm not going to die? Not at my hands, no, and hopefully not at all. Regardless, I put you in danger of bringing you to Korea and associating you with my daughters. How so? I am, as you would say, a dead man walking, as are my girls. My sight's not quite back yet, and it's pretty dark in here, but... You sound pretty healthy. Are Jong and Yoonji both very healthy? It's not like that, Sean. How much do you really know about the Democratic People's Republic of Korea? Honestly, not a whole lot. Considering I fell for your alliance saying Pyongyang was a suburban part of Seoul, you probably have a good idea of, about my lack of awareness. North Korea is a bloody dictatorship. Pick your poison. Our leader is made out to be de a demagogue, and the one political party we have has a death grip on the nation. You've seen the results around here in your visit. Since assuming leadership of the country, Glorious Leader is suspected of executing at least 70 people, most of them potential political opponents and their families. It appears I've made the list as well. Are you saying you're going to be the target of a political execution mandated by Glorious Leader? That's nuts! I mean, our leaders are pretty annoying, but at least Hillary and Donald don't kill each other's families and associates. They've already poisoned my wife to death. It's only a matter of time before they come for me and the girls. That's why I made a plan ahead of time. One to, one to at least save maybe my girls. It hits me just now. 
You're the one who invited me to Korea while playing Panzer Madles online, weren't you? Uh, excuse me? Crossover much? I pitched it as an idea to the party, to lure an American soldier over here and try to create an international incident. In reality, I wanted you to meet my daughters and hopefully fall in love with Yunji, my youngest. That part must have worked, seeing as you're sitting here now. Yes, in a roundabout way, Yunji and I have confessed our mutual love of each other. My precious youngest girl. I hope she's managed to express her feelings. The problem is, I'm not sure how to go about getting you out of the country safely. The brass are waiting on me to turn you over uh, on any charge I can trump up. My plan was to send you and the girls to the United States Embassy in Pyongyang, but that's a no-go. If I had to guess, relations with the USA have been sour for so long. We don't even have an embassy in Pyongyang, do we? No, you don't. I really should have made sure of that little fact before springing this plan. It appears Sweden is the protective power of the United States and North Korea. Yeah, that's a big gaping hole in a plan there. Sweden might take me in and send me back to the United States. Maybe. But there's no way they're getting involved with sheltering two North Korean citizens who are part of the People's Army, no less. I'm well aware of that. However, I do have a backup plan in place. He stands up, but I still can't make anything of his face. He goes over to the door and opens it, and slowly both Yunji and Jung walk in. Be strong, girls. This ordeal will soon be over. Father, I can't leave you here to face your death on your own. Please reconsider coming with us. You know I can't go. But, but Appa, I can't just leave you here to die. My precious daughter. I wouldn't survive the trip. Though I built up a tolerance to the poisons our country uses, I'm not immune. Even if I survived sneaking back into the shipyard one more time, I would perish on the journey. It is enough to know my girls lived on, safe and away from this godforsaken country. He's shaking, literally, and crying along with them. I feel like I'm going to cry myself. This will be the last time this father will get to hold his children and tell them he loves them. Parents will attempt the impossible for their children. This man is trying to avoid the needless and senseless death of his daughters. For him, for my budding relationship with Yunji, for the love she bears for Jung, I must help him. Sir, what are my marching orders? This isn't an army game, Sean. This is deadly serious. You think I don't know that, Yunji? This man is trying to ensure that the two of most precious beings on this planet to him don't die in a tragically stupid fashion. I handle problems best when I compartmentalize them in a military sense. So I need to know this plan, or marching orders, so I can help him achieve his final wish. You have my gratitude, son. There's little time, so listen closely. We are in Nampo, a port city south of Pyongyang on the Tadong River, hit leading into the Yellow Sea. There's a large order of garments being exported from there today. It took a long time for them to finish the final batch, but it's a large enough shipment to put a large metal shipping container. It's ventilated, as they don't want the garments to blow, grow musty in the closed container, so you'll be able to breathe. I've been slowly hiding rations and other vital items in bins. You should be fine for food and water if you try to go easy on the supplies. So, we're smuggling ourselves out by trade ship then. It was the only solution that came to mind. However, I don't know where that ship is heading. Likely China. However, it could be anywhere, from Europe to South America. That's a long trip. What are we going to do about needing to use the facilities? There are a few buckets hidden in the clothing as well. You'll have to sneak out and empty them overboard at night to avoid the smell lingering. The container does, does open from the inside as well as a safety precaution. Understood. How much time do we have? Precious little. I believe there are already authorities here in Nampo looking to apprehend all of us. You'll need to find the container DPRK24601. It's on the ground, so accessing it will be easy once you find it. It's on the ship called Destiny Favors Glorious Leader. One of the girls can point it out. Well, that's an overinflated name if I've ever heard one. I'll wait outside the door so you three can say your goodbyes. I'm grateful. Please, do all you can to get them to America. Get them to safety. I don't say anything, but I give him an encouraging nod and salute. I think if I tried to talk, I'd end up crying. I can't do that right now. I need to be on my game. A few minutes later, the girls come out, their eyes full of tears. Not that I blame them. They won't ever see him again. If we fail, we're dead. 
If we succeed, it doesn't matter since we won't come back. And he'll be dead. This is Fifty Shades of Fucked Up. I have to keep it together and be strong for them. I have an unspoken promise to keep. Let's go. The girls just nod and follow me out of the building. It doesn't look like the shipyard is too far from here. Which is good, because as we left the building to head that way, I saw some people's army soldiers heading right for the building as we left. They didn't notice us, though. We need to get to that shipyard quickly, and without being seen. Any ideas? Our best bet might be walking the walking path over there. We could try sneak through the forest as best we can, and the trees may provide some cover. It's too dangerous to take the main road. Understood. Let's walk at a brisk pace. As we head over to the walking path, I quickly check my pockets. They put my wallet in as well as my keys. Oh, and that crappy excuse for a cell phone. They put that in my pockets too. Hope it's turned off. Need to save the juice for when we reach our destination. I tried to put all the essentials back into your pockets when we dressed you. But the rest of your stuff is back at our place. Probably confiscated by now. Well, on the plus side, they can't hold that Tokyo Hotel band t-shirt against me. They both giggle a little bit at the memory. Good. They need something to get through this. We're making good progress. I haven't seen too many people's army members patrolling the walking path. And we're able to avoid the attention of the few that are. If we can keep this up for ten more minutes, we should get there. This is going too well. Are you trying to jinx this? What in the world are you talking about? Just a stupid superstition. Don't worry about it. With that, we are moving along again in silence. So far, Yunji's comment hasn't jinxed us yet. We're almost at the harbor now. Just as we're getting closer, a lone people's army member appears. He halts us and speaks in Korean in a harsh tone. Civilians are not allowed here. Who's this guy, a tourist? Where's your group and minder? I'm sweating bullets here, and we need to do something faster or we'll all be wearing bullets. Where is minders? He wanted us to see he wanted to see this area up close. You lie. You're not in uniform. Are you here on a sabotage mission? Stay put while I call the commander. Screw that. Kapow! Wow. You must defeat Gunny to stand a chance against me. Dear God, you jabbed out his eyes! I knew that MCMAP would move would come in handy one day. You'll have plenty of time to explain what the hell that was once we secure ourselves on that ship. I drag the blind, unconscious army member and hide him in a nearby tool shed. We should be long before he comes to. Let's move. John, lead the way. Doesn't take long, and John has us looking at the ship. With all the hustle and bustle getting the, the thing out to port, we're able to sneak aboard. There. Container DPRK24601. As we slip inside the metal container, I can't help but compare myself to Jean... Uh, Valjean right now. Or Jean Valjean. Or... Oh, right! That's the guy from Les Mis! <clears throat> hey, just because I'm Marine Corps doesn't mean I ha don't have time between crayon eating and some... Uh, read some classic literature. Yeah, whatever. We close the door and lock it behind us. There's some light coming in from the vents. Enough so we can rummage for our stuff when needed. We head towards the far back and settle in for our trip. Um, guys, I have to pee. Uh, let's scrounge for one of the buckets, Yunji. This is pretty much how time goes. We scrounge for the food and water that Kong Zhuo left. Or Kong Zhou left. We sleep. We try to entertain each other. I try to bolster their spirits about going to the west. There's this cool place called Las Vegas where you can spend all day ignoring the natural desert beauty. And instead... Stay inside, dropping quarters in slot machines while drinking free booze. They tell me stories about their parents. I think it's cathartic for them. In general, we just try to keep ourselves from going bonkers for being locked up in a shipping container out at sea. Fortunately, at least none of us got seasick. Finally, after who knows how many days, I hear people talking around the container. They seem somewhat distressed. What's more, the container is getting lifted into the air, likely by a crane. Did you catch any of what they said? The Korean said something about not being behind on the shipment. I can't make out what any of the other people said, as I don't know what language they were speaking. Did you happen to hear the Koreans mention where we are? I think I heard something about welcome to Dures when we arrived at the port. Damn, I know that's in Europe, but I can't recall where. That does explain why we were on this ship for so long, though. 
Felt like we were in the air there for a bit, so I think we're not on the ship anymore. We must be on a cargo truck heading somewhere. I'm afraid I didn't catch where this truck is heading. Suppose we'll find out when we get there. We should change back into our uniforms, so we can officially surrender our citizenship at the nearest embassy. We are from North Korea, after all. Not much else is said as the truck rumbles along the road for hours. We do have one interesting conversation on the ride, though. Mostly, I tell them about the West. I mostly tell them how nice it is. Beautiful scenery, friendly people, op opportunity. Probably sound like a commercial, but they sound excited. Finally, we appear to be pulling into somewhere to stop. I wait a few minutes to make sure before peeking out of the box. The coast is clear. Let's hop out. We get out of the box to stretch our legs in the sun. Finally, taking a good look around, I notice that wherever we are, it looks like a damned war zone. Literally. I think I still see damage from the mortar shellings in the buildings around us. The air doesn't smell good as well. Can you make out where we are at all? I glance around trying to find a marker. Not too far down lies a flag over a building. Red flag of a black bird. Bad news and more bad news. Wonderful, and what would that be? Welcome to Albania. This is the West? Wow, the West sucks. Even Pyongyang didn't look quite this bad. You think this is bad? Wait until we get home to Detroit. And that's it. Well, we made it out. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. Um, let me try to go ahead and give some justification for why I chose Yunji. Honestly, in my family, I'm the younger of two siblings. Well, the younger of... Yeah, I have an older sister, and... I know what it feels like to live in your older sibling's shadow. I felt like I could empathize with her there. And... Plus, she's just really cute in that military uniform. So, yeah, I'm also, I'm also glad for everybody who helped make this game, um, there's not much I can say, this music is quite loud in my ears, so I can barely think, something, something, I don't know, uh, yeah, but still, I also wanted to just get this project done, cause I needed to familiarize myself with how to work with a game like this because you know and is that it no nope. oh no nope. just back to the okay all right well that's all so thanks for joining me here everybody i mean i mean it went pretty well from what i could see so yeah, and there we go. Um, so, I guess next time on whatever we do here, um, I don't know. But one thing's for certain. I can guarantee you guys, shortly after this, it'll be time for Let's Play number 13. Oh, and as for the other endings, I think they're just as funny or silly or whatever, but I don't know. Uh, try picking up this game for yourself if you want to. So, yeah, there we go. See you guys for whatever project I decide to do next. Laters!